so I can imagine some of you are feeling that this uh, time in Mayapur has been going maybe a little slow for you, sometimes even dragged, no? Well, sometimes in the course of the three or four months, a little, maybe sometimes you felt, did I do the right thing? You know, just like education, you know, when we were, when our material education, when we were kids, you know, the parents would say, come on, you have to go to school. And we'd say, oh no, not school again, you know. And then the parents would say, oh, these are the best years of your life. And we would be thinking, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> so the same way we tell the, we can say to the devotees here, you know, actually coming to Mayapur and doing Bhakti Shastri, it's probably some of the best months in our life. It's really, a, when you look back on it, after you get over, after you finish it and you look back over it, you can really appreciate the time here, just being in the holy place and being with the devotees regularly, studying. It's a very wonderful experience. Education is very important in the material world. Every government gives a big percentage of their income. They spend a huge amount on education. Very, very important in every country in the world. And similarly, the, the managers of ISKCON, the GBC, they also are aware of the, the need for education and therefore they also encourage this effort like here in Mayapur with the Mayapur Institute. They facilitated the development of the new project and arranged for the land allocation so that the new building can come up because they know this is very important education. 500 years ago, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in Benares chanting and dancing. And the Mayavadis, the followers of Prakashananda Saraswati, they're all from the Advaita school. They're all followers of Shankaracharya. And they're thinking, oh, this man, he's just a sentimentalist. He doesn't come and study Vedanta Sutra like all of us. He's just, a, some, just some sentimentalist. He doesn't know anything. He's got some mystic power, some magic tricks. Therefore, he has some followers. But when they actually met with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then it was Lord Chaitanya who gave them the actual meaning of the Vedanta Sutra. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not just simply chanting and dancing. And this is often an allegation put against us, the Krishna Consciousness Movement, that people think, oh, we're just sentimentalists, we just chant and dance, we don't know anything. So we have to present to them, we have to be able to speak to them. On, we have to present the scriptures. We don't just sell the books, but we actually live by the books. These books are our life, and we want to know what's in these books ourselves. We had the experience when we first introduced book distribution in China. We had some of the Chinese devotees go to one of the universities in China. And they have huge universities in China, just like in America, you know, thousands of people. So one of the devotees was there distributing books, and he was talking to the, the person, and he was telling him about Bhagavad Gita, and the, the, the boy he was talking to, he said, you know this book, you know this book better than I know any of my textbooks. You know, he was a student at the college, he was studying, but he said, I don't know our books the way you know this book. He said, you must be really serious about understanding about this knowledge. So it's very important, all of us, that we want to appreciate Srila Prabhupada's books. And I think coming to Mayapur and taking part in these courses, like Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vaibhav, 
It's a wonderful opportunity for all of us to go deeper into Prabhupada's books. The, the place is perfect and the association is perfect because in that association everyone has come with that purpose that they want to commit themselves to this time to studying Prabhupada's books and deepening their understanding of what's in Prabhupada's books. So we very grateful to all of you for participating in this program and what we encourage all the devotees to do is after you take the course then you go and teach it yourselves. That way you understand much more. Just sitting listening is only the beginning. What you all have to do now is go out and teach it to all the people you know. You make a group and you get together and regularly you teach them everything you have learned and understood here. And in this way you will find your knowledge grows more and more. Krishna consciousness is a dynamic experience. We don't just, we, we can never be satisfied reading Prabhupada's books just one time. We have to hear them again and again. And the more you, we have that mood to share this knowledge with others, then the more Krishna consciousness becomes alive to us. And this is the kind of experience which we want all of you to get. So we encourage you, you know, don't think, well, I've graduated. I remember when I graduated from college, I thought, well, I'm glad that's over with. Get rid of everything and forget everything I ever learned. You know, I learned so many mundane things, you know. I can remember the names, uh, Fourier analysis, Laplace transformations, you know, very elevated mathematical applications. I couldn't do anything with it today. It, you know, I just forgot everything. But Bhagavad Gita is something real. It's not just some mundane knowledge which we memorize, but we actually live according to the Bhagavad Gita. And coming here to Bhakti, Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vaibhav, it gives us that opportunity to appreciate more the value of these scriptures. So we thank all of you again for coming here and giving all of us the opportunity to take part in sharing this Krishna conscious knowledge with all of you. On behalf of Srila Prabhupada, I thank all of you very much. Hare Krishna.